this is how you get yourself out of a pickle uh, if you're stuck on the side of the road and you have the engine com error and your gauges are sweeping if you have the ISL 400 the Cummins ISL 400 this is what you can do I don't know much about electricity all I know is that you don't want to release the magic smoke the first thing that you got to do whenever you're working on your engine and electrical is turn off your batteries or just disconnect them but make sure you hook them back up right all right so this is just going to be a down and dirty uh kind of a deal so we're on our way up to glacier we got an engine com error on the dash the gauges started going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth um we ended up on the side of the road we had to get flat bedded back to missoula 71 miles uh like a three thousand dollar tow because we flat bedded it uh, our rig has to be flat bedded had a tech come out this morning we were just out here talking and looking at stuff and i ended up touching the rear control uh the rear run box and all of a sudden the fuel pump kicked on so we were both like hmm. we had the ignition on in the rig but nothing was happening because the gauges were going back and forth and it, uh, the rig wouldn't talk to the ECM, the engine control module. So it took off the panel here and he's poking around, he's wiggling wires and everything. And right here, there's a panel. So he would touch it. I have a video, you know what? I'm gonna put the video right here. This is what it was doing. Okay, so now that you see what it was doing, uh, I got a hold of Frank, which I'm gonna leave all of his information below. This guy is awesome. He's amazing. We ended up diagnosing that the board was bad. J. J4 for power. J4, the one that this feeds, when this kicks off, has full power. But the this one back here does not have power. So right now it's kicked off. And there's, there's no power there. But the J3 does have power. So there's losing, it's losing power somewhere between the power lug. I don't know if that's J3 or 4 or whatever. whatever. I'm not sure. And here, there's no power. So if I wiggle this and get this to come back on, now we have power there. The easiest way to get this board off is to take off these two hex screws, pull off these two switches, and that will give you access to the four screws that hold it on, one in each corner. Once you get that off, you have to disconnect your two clip connectors here. And then on the back, right here is your power. And on the front, that's your ECM. You pull those off. And then your board will come out but here's the important part even without this board we can still run the rig i had to go out and get a, a fused jumper i put the ends on so this originally was a 20 amp he messaged me back he said that he was looking at the schematics he said don't do a 20 amp do a 5 amp so what you do on this rig this is a 2006 isl 400 uh, like eight I think it's an 8.9 so you take this hotline and jump it to this ECM line by way of your fused jumper doing that you'll be able to start 
and drive your rig with no issues. Things that you have to keep in mind doing this, it's not a permanent fix. It's to get you out of a bad situation. If you're stuck on the side of the road, uh, you have a way to get to a service center. As soon as you put this in and you put a fuse in there, the ECM is going to be powered. So if you're just sitting here like we are, you keep you pull the fuse out so the ECM is not powered. Um, I'm gonna put this in here just in case we have to leave. We have a way to leave. I'll throw a fuse in here and we'll be, we'll be able to go. After you put your jumper on, make sure that you tape up both ends. I just untaped this one. Make sure you tape them up with the electrical tape. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys real quick how to physically start the engine. Uh, I talked to you a little bit about it before. This is your rear run box. You gotta take this panel off. This is the jumper that I told you guys about. When you need to start your engine, you take your fuse and you put it in the fuse holder. As soon as I do that, you're gonna hear the fuel pump kick on. So we're gonna let that cycle. That's the fuel pump. So while that's doing that, I made a jumper. It's just an alligator clip, and I used a, a horseshoe uh, connector thing. So that's all this is. So once the, once the fuel pump cycles, I'm gonna take this clip and I'm gonna connect it to this connection right here because this is the chassis connection. This is the chassis power. You don't want the house power, you want the chassis. This is what starts the engine. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab 12 volts from here. I'm grabbing 12 volts from there. As soon as I connect that 12 volts to this brown wire right here, the engine's gonna start. Now, <clears throat> in order to stop the engine, because right now we're directly powering the ECO in order to stop the engine, you have to pull that fuse, okay? So, here we go. Ready? We're gonna start it up. So, now to stop it, we're just gonna pull the fuse, and the engine will turn off. Like I said, this is not for, you know, it's not a long-term fix. This is a fix to get you off the side of the road, to get you to a service center, so you can get your rig fixed properly. I hope this helps. Um, it's, you know, we full-time. This is just one of the things that you have to deal with. So I hope this helps. Um, if you're not sure about your skill or what you're doing, call for a tow, call for, you know, a, a service tech, something. If you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. Hope that helps. Peace.